I, the seeker of adventure, do solemnly swear on the noble art of magic, that I will abide by the laws of the land, and I will always be truthful and wary upon my quest, and that I do not use my magic for personal gain, but to advance peace and prosperity to the inhabitants of the land of make believe -thon. Holly and welcome to my Believeathon vlog. It's officially Believeathon, which is a middle grade readathon hosted by How to Train Your Gavin, and it's all about reading children's fiction, middle grade. And this actually does run for two weeks, but I'm going to try and read all my books this week because I have a lot of really chunky books on my TBR this month. And I'm a little worried that if I just like left them to the last week or last two weeks, it would just, I would suffer. So this is my TBR for the week. This is like my main TBR. I do have a couple of other books that I might want to get to this week, but I did strain my eyeballs last week and I couldn't even look at a page for more than a few minutes without feeling dizzy. So... I'm just going for these. You don't have to do this, but I've very much gone for rereading some of my childhood favourites this time and yeah, I'm very excited. And the first book I'm going to read is The Famous Five by Enid Blyton. I don't think I ever finished this when I was younger. I've owned this for a long time, but I don't think I ever got around to finishing it because I didn't enjoy it. All I know is that it follows five kids on a treasure island. That's all I know. This is going to be for my Poacher's Pocket Inn prompt, which is the first book in the series. I've literally read one chapter and I had a look when this was published and it's published in 1942 and you can really tell it's got that kind of quaint old style and I really don't read many old books like in this style. Let me just read you like a little bit of it. So this is just from chapter one. No spoilers. Are we picnicking soon? asked Anne, feeling hungry all of a sudden. Yes, said mother, but not yet. It's only eleven o'clock. We shan't have lunch till at least half past twelve, Anne. Oh gracious, said Anne. I know I can't last out till then. You know, it's got that. It's... I, I think when I was younger, I just did not have the time for this. I was like, okay, no. I really did not like classic children's fiction when I was younger. I remember reading Treasure Island, I think. And I hated that. Like, I really, I really didn't like classic children's fiction when I was younger. Because young me was like, no one says that. But obviously in the 1940s, they did say stuff. So the basic premise that I can gather is that you have these three siblings and then they're going to their uncle's house. So there's also the cousin. And then I think the dog is what makes up the five. I've been saying that it's about five kids, but I think it's four kids and a dog. And funny story, actually, I dressed up as the dog for a World Book Day. I got like a collar engraved. I had like this barking mask and I never read the book, but I dressed up as the dog and I should have won. I should have won. Like, I think there was like a prize. I should have won, but my enemy won instead. I actually did have like an arch nemesis. In my perspective, I had an arch nemesis. I don't know if he thought he was my arch nemesis, but he won. This whole vlog is just gonna be me reminiscing. So if you're interested in that, stick around. If you're not, this might not be for you because this is just gonna be me talking about my childhood and revisiting books. <laughs>
so I've just finished The Famous Five. It's about three o'clock. I find it quite hard to rate children's books sometimes because enjoyment wise this was kind of a three stars so I think I'm gonna give it three stars. It's pretty simplistic. This follows these four children and a dog who go to this island. They find this shipwreck. There's this, like lost gold story and they're trying to find the gold. There was one thing that I really enjoyed. So you have the three siblings, they're the two boys and the girl, and then they go to their cousins who is also a girl, but she likes to be called George. Her given name is Georgina, but she doesn't like people to call her that. And she has short hair. She does a lot of things that maybe girls weren't expected to do at this time. I think this was written in the 40s, I believe. Yes, 1942. And I quite like that, the challenging of like the gender stereotypes. I think it was quite fun. It was quite a fun little adventure. Would I recommend it? Maybe if you'd read them when you were younger, but I don't know if they really stand up compared to some of the amazing middle grades and children's fiction that's out there now. I think I'd probably say it's had its time and maybe reread them if you read them when you were younger, but if you haven't, just let it go. It's too late. So that was my first read and that means that I have done the Poacher's Pocket Inn. So my next prompt that I've picked is Baba Yaga's House, which is a family relationship. And for that, I'm reading Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. I remember loving this when I was younger. I love the film. I'm excited to get to this. That's all my updates for now. And let me go and start Charlotte's Web. Believeathon, and I am about 60 pages through Charlotte's Web, and I think I'm going to enjoy this a lot more than Five on a Treasure Island because this one just has some, it has like heart and emotion, whereas the famous Five one was just very boring. It's about a pig called Wilbur who is saved from slaughter by Fern because he's like the runt of the litter. Fern's father is gonna kill him and she's like no no I'll raise him and he ends up going to live on their on her uncle's farm but oh, it's just like there's a bit right. One of the other animals was it like the sheep or the goose? One of them was like they're fattening you up to kill you at Christmas. And he's just like, I don't wanna die. Okay. I think it's really great. And I love the illustrations. Like, look at this one. Look at how cute that is. That's Wilbur trying to spin a web because he's like, I could make a web. And Charlotte's like, no, honey, no, you can't. Oh, it really is. It's really good. It's a great book for children. There's a lot in here that I would consider educational. Charlotte uses a lot of long, complex words, for example, like sedentary. And I think it's a really great way to expand children's vocabulary. So far, I'm really enjoying it. Charlotte's Web and I really enjoyed it. I had a few tears at the end and I think it's a fantastic book for kids. I would still recommend it for kids. It's very educational. There's a lot of words in here that are 
new and explained. I think it does a good job of talking about death. I think it was also written really well. There were some beautiful descriptions in here about nature and the changing of the seasons. I'm not sure whether to give it a four or five stars because like I say, it's quite hard for me to judge a children's book. I think this is a fantastic children's book. It definitely stands up. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'd highly recommend it. It did what it set out to do. It was beautifully written. The characters were great and the whole plot, I just really love the plot. And that was my Baba Yaga's house prompt, I believe. So my next spot is the 100 Acre Wood from Winnie the Pooh. And of course I picked the complete Winnie the Pooh to fulfill this prompt. I think this is actually two of the books. Yeah, two classic books. So you've got Winnie the Pooh and The House at Pooh Corner. But I'm just gonna try and read the whole thing and count it as one book. This follows a boy called Christopher Robin, I believe. And all the animals that are based off his toys. They go on adventures. I don't remember, like, I have no idea what the plot of this is really about, but I loved Winnie the Pooh when I was younger. So I'm very excited to read this. Yeah, I'm having a great time. So it's Wednesday and I've just finished the first book in the complete Winnie the Pooh. These are actually kind of short stories following the characters in The Hundred Acre Wood and it was so cute. I loved it so much. If I ever have kids you can guarantee that I'm going to read these to my kids because I just love it so much. There's also a lot of like songs in this. Obviously it's not got music, but a lot of rhyming and poems, which I think kids really love. I love that when I was younger. Oh, I just really love Winnie the Pooh. And I'm going to try and finish the second book today as well. Hello, so it's Thursday and I thought I would give you an update. Last night I finished the complete Winnie the Pooh. This is two books, so there's Winnie the Pooh and The House at Pooh Corner and I loved them. Both of them were fantastic. I gave them both five stars. I would highly recommend this. If I ever have kids, I definitely think that I'm going to be reading this to them because it's just so pure and wholesome and all the friendships between all these characters are just brilliant. Like Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, they're so cute. All the characters really are very distinct. I really love it. And then today I'm starting Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I've already read the first few chapters. I think I'm maybe on chapter four. One thing I thought I would show you that's really cute is in the front I have this sticker and I don't know if you can see and it says this book belongs to the home library of Holly Moore and I give it 1000 stars. I just 
We <laughs> see, I loved it when I was younger. I think I'm gonna love it again. just finished Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I enjoyed it. I think I'm probably gonna give this one a four star just because there's elements of this story that I just think are really questionable. Obviously it's very classic. The story is so inventive. It really is a great concept for a book. This whole chocolate factory and the competition to get the golden ticket. But these children, some of them are like disfigured for life. And I feel like, I know it's a kid's book and it's not real, but that's kind of brushed over a little bit and I wasn't a fan of that. Also, looking at it from a 2020 perspective, some of the concepts in here aren't the best. For example, how it talks about plus size people, but I still enjoyed it. It was still so fun to go back and revisit this story. And I've actually got the sequel, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, that is going to be my last read. I do not remember the plot of this one at all. Just looking at the blurb, the synopsis on the back of this, it sounds incredibly strange. It says, Mr Wonka might be a genius with chocolate, but Charlie and his family don't trust his flying skills one bit, especially when the thing he's flying is a glass elevator and it's zooming out of control into the stratosphere. Is this in space? Very strange. I am interested to see what I think. Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator is set in space, which was a choice. And there's an illustration and I want to show it to you. If you don't want to be spoiled at all, it's kind of a spoiler. But if you don't want to be spoiled, just skip ahead. But I have to show you because it's just ridiculous. Look at this. What is this? What is this? <laughs> Apparently it's something nasty in the lifts. Okay. It literally looks like a chicken nugget with eyes. Hello, so I've finished Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. I think this is going to be my last read for Believeathon. This was a really strange reading experience. I don't know what I expected from this because I couldn't remember anything. I know that I've read this before when I was younger, but I remembered nothing about the plot. But it was, you could not predict what this story was gonna be. It was wild and I don't know if I enjoyed it. It kind of seemed like uh, Roald Dahl just was like one afternoon like look people love Charm the Chocolate Factory. I ought to write a sequel and what is the wackiest things that I could do and he created this. If you really care about being spoiled about this book I'll put a spoiler thing on the screen and you can skip ahead but so half of this was set in space and then they come home, everything's fine. And then for some reason, Willy Wonka has these kind of like pills that age people, like unage, so makes people younger. And he gives one to one of the grandmas and because she's taken too many, she becomes a minus, like she's like minus three. So they have to go like to the depths of the chocolate factory and revive her. I don't know. And then she became like 300 and something. I don't even know what happened with this book. It was, it wasn't great. But also some sections in here that just felt really 
out of place. There was a whole bit where the Oompa Loompas were singing a song about this girl who'd taken too many laxatives. And for me, that just is not appropriate for children. Also, unlike the other classic fiction that I've read this week, there were bits in here that just really were not great. Some of the jokes just were, they just didn't, I don't think a child would ever be able to appreciate them. And I do know that like children's books do have these kind of jokes that say the adult who's reading the book could appreciate, but the fact was that most of the jokes in this were that kind of joke. And I just don't think as a kid's book, it was very good. It just didn't really stand up, those kind of jokes I just don't appreciate. But obviously at the time maybe that was okay, but then still it's a kid's book and why do you need those kind of jokes? I don't think a kid would understand them at all. I didn't love this. I think I'm gonna give it three stars. It's still a lot of like nonsensical fun. I don't know if I'd call it fun, but yeah. Also, I have a theory, Willy Wonka, is a wizard. Yeah, I mean, the things that go on in his factory are very strange. That is my theory. And nothing can convince me otherwise. I mean, the great glass elevator is flying. It is flying through the sky. It's flying through space. And that's all I've got to say. So we come to the end of my Believe-a-thon. I know I've only done it over about five days, but that's fine for me. I've still ended up reading a lot more children's books than I usually would. So I've got them all here and I thought I would just go through them. So the first book I read this week was Five on a Treasure Island by Enid Blyton. This is the first book in the Famous Five series. And I read this for the Poacher's Pocket Inn, which was to read the first book in a series. I didn't love this, I gave this three stars. And I don't really know if it holds up now. I think there's so many fantastic children's books out there that maybe it's had its time. And then my second book for Baba Yaga's House, which was a book featuring a family relationship, we have Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. I loved this, I gave it five stars. I still think it holds up, and if I ever have kids, I'm definitely reading this to them because there's so much heart and emotion and friendship in this book. And then my third read for The Hundred Acre Wood, which was a book with yellow on the cover, I picked The Complete Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milne. I love this too. It's so sweet and heartwarming. And again, I think it holds up. If I ever have kids, I'm definitely going to be reading this to them. My fourth read for Black Ice Bridge, which was a book featuring an expedition or adventure, we have Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Tree by Roald Dahl, following a poor boy called Charlie Bucket who gets to go to this elusive chocolate factory and weird strange things go on. I didn't give this a five star, I think I'm giving it a four star. And then the final book that I read was Charlie in the Great Glass Elevator by Roald Dahl. This was my book for the bookkeeper's stronghold which was to read the next book in a series. And I didn't love this, I gave it three stars, it was still fun. I think Roald Dahl has a great writing style, it's quite nonsensical and fun, but I just don't think it really hit the mark, especially as a children's book. I think there was a lot of content in this that children wouldn't understand. I don't think I'd recommend this one. I think I'd still recommend Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but this one was just really strange and maybe not suitable for the kids in your life. So... Those are all the books. That's the end of Believe-a-thon for me. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Thank you for watching and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye!